my clue is, remember I gave you, um, I gave you that, that pair of equations before and I said, hey, what do you think might be the best way to combine these? And when you looked at it, you said, oh, I think we can eliminate something, right? Now, elimination happens to be only really useful in a very small number of cases, right? Where like, oh, the number of x's is exactly the same, or the number of y's is exactly the same. That actually doesn't happen very frequently. For that reason, it's actually the other primary method that gets used 99% of the time. It's not solved by elimination, it's solved by substitution. So one of these equations, I'm going to substitute into the other. Which do you think is easier? I think the first into the second. So my first line will be substitute 1 into 2. That's my first line, there's my clue. Now, maybe you got to hear in your life, but I don't know what that looks like in this context. And that's why we're meeting it now, rather than back in simultaneous equations. Let me show you how I would do the working. Oops, rule this. All right. Because I'm substituting line one, equation one into equation two, what that means is everywhere I saw a y in equation two, I'm not going to write y. I'm going to write x plus two because y and x plus 2 are supposed to be interchangeable, that's what that means. Okay? So therefore my first line of working will look like this. There's an x squared, and then instead of writing y squared, I'm going to write x plus 2. That's the whole object. x plus 2 squared. Okay? So it's a little bit weird that I have to put in this weird complicated object in there, but I have to put the whole thing and square the whole thing, because look, all of y is being squared. So I guess that means everything on the right hand side also has to be squared. That is equal to 4. So you can see another one of the reasons why we're doing this skill now rather than earlier is because all of a sudden you've got to bring together all these skills that like we've used in isolated ways and now all of a sudden you just have to know, oh, I know what to do with this, I better expand. Okay? So that is a whole other kettle of fish on its own. What is this when I expand the brackets? So, the most common error here, because people are thinking of a whole lot of other stuff, there's just lots in your brain, is to say, well that squared is x squared, and that square is, is 4. And not remembering that actually, there's this extra guy in the middle. Okay, so have a look at your working. Once you've got that though, everything does work out. You subtract 4 from both sides, so they're gone. Okay? You can collect some like terms. How many x squareds do you have? Two of them. You've got that 4x still hanging around. Uh, there's some common factors here that you can divide through by, right? Namely, ah, uh, now, I'm going to divide through by the number, 2. That leaves me with this. I'm deliberately not going to divide through by x, even though it's common. Here's why. Let's just go ahead and solve this and see what happens. Uh, if I factorize, I get this. And this has solutions. What are the solutions? Count them. One solution, two solutions. Now let's just rewind for a second and suppose I didn't do it this way. Suppose back uh, here or here. If I divided through by x, what would happen? Well, if you divide everything in this line by x, you get an x plus 2. What happens on the right hand side? It's just the it's just zero, right? Zero divided by x is still zero. Now, this is not wrong. In fact, you can see I've used that over here. I want x plus 2 to equal 0. But there's something missing, right? Do you see, like, by dividing through by x, the solution I would have got from here has just vanished. It's disappeared. This guy only has one solution, but I'm supposed to have two, okay? So this is why maybe it's worth writing with an extra color over on the left-hand side. Um, don't divide through. Don't divide by variables. You notice when I divided by the number 2, there was no problem. I still ended up with all the solutions. But if you divide by variables, you eliminate solutions is the way that we would say it. Okay. Alright, so um, you got some x values. Has anyone already gone and found the y values? Yep. Let me just jot them down. What was the first y value you got? When x is 0, y is going to be 2. And 
by the same logic, when x is negative 2, y is 0. Yes? OK, so what does this mean? Well, let's have a look. You don't have to do this next bit, but I'm going to encourage you, especially if you're like, oh, I feel like I get this. Um, I'd like to progress to the next thing. It's just such a valuable tool for you. You told me this is a straight line, and you told me this is a circle both of which you know how to draw, okay? You don't have to draw them. Um, if this takes you a long time, then, then skip it. You can do it all just by algebra. But if you can even just draw a rough one, just like we did over there, you can confirm very quickly, there's y equals x plus 2, that these are indeed the solutions. 0, 2. Where is that? 0, 2. It's, it's up the top. That's that point right there, right? You see it's 0 because it's not move from the x-axis, y-axis, sorry, and two, it's, it's up. And what about this guy, where's that? It's the left-hand one, negative two, zero. Okay. So graphing is a wonderful tool, just like the sense check you used in our trigonometry questions earlier. It's a great tool to say, yeah, that looks right, cool, I'm in the right ballpark, right? If you've got negative values of x over here, you know that's, that doesn't make sense.